Hey everyone, today we are going to look at the new GNOME 40, or GNOME if you prefer. And GNOME 40 uh, was just released, the beta, officially I guess, semi, yesterday, March 24th. And so I thought I'd just better have a look at this and see what it's all about. Even though I'm kind of more of a KDE person myself, I have used GNOME before and I've kind of had a a love-hate relationship with it but overall I think GNOME is a pretty cool desktop so I thought this would be really worth taking a look I've heard that they've had quite a makeover and GNOME 40 uh, in case that sounds confusing to you because the current version of GNOME is 3.38 what's up with going from 3.38 all the way up to 40 what <laughs> well from the way I understand it what they did was they dropped the 3. So instead of going 3.38 up to 3.40, they dropped the 3 and made it GNOME 40. And that kind of makes sense to me because now you have GTK 4. If you're going GTK 2, GTK 3, and so forth, and now GTK 4, it just seems cleaner. It makes more sense that you would have 40 and GTK 4. So anyways, that's kind of how I understand it. Right now, I'm at 40.gnome.org. And so here they got a few spins of Linux that you can try this out on. And so I kind of checked these a little bit of ahead of time, the, the different, the sizes of these guys. And I even downloaded, originally I downloaded the GNOME OS Nightly, because I thought that would be kind of cool. The ISO size on that was like 2.4 gigs. Uh, bigger than the other two. Fedora is 1.9 gigs and OpenSUSE is 1.2, at least at the time of this video. So I went ahead and chose the Fedora spin. Originally I downloaded the OS nightly because I thought ah, that might be kind of cool, really cutting edge. But I loaded it into my vert manager. Even though it's got the bootable files on there, it says it's not a bootable image. So now I'm not really quite sure what's up with that. <laughs> so I decided to just move on to Fedora, which is still bigger than the OpenSUSE. And I was kind of tempted to go with OpenSUSE, but then at the last second I decided Fedora because I've used SUSE before, which I really like, probably better than Fedora. But Fedora just kind of looked like it was really kind of wired for this beta, um, call it instinct or intuition, I guess, but so I went with beta and I went ahead and installed it so I could spare you the pain of the install because it's just your typical Fedora install. Uh, the only exception would be that they did have a warning on there that this was a beta release and not ready for prime time. So they wanted to make that very clear in big bold red letters during the install. Other than that, it was really pretty much the same that you would typically see on a hundred other videos. <laughs> so let's take a look at this. So here I am at my login screen and I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. And as we come in, it's got a really nice default wallpaper here, like that watercolor effect, that's pretty neat. And when you first take a look at this, it just kind of looks like the same old gnome, blank screen and what have you. So let's go up to our activities and when you hit this, you can see, wow, you know, check that out. That's way different. So we got our dash down here at the bottom now instead of off to the side, which personally I like that better. To me, being on the bottom is just makes more sense to me. I like it better. And so then if we go over here to our show applications, then we can choose our applications and we have our desktop showing right up here on top which is also very cool. So if I were to open something like, um, let's say LibreOffice Calc, and let's see how snappy that is. Eh, not bad, not bad, pretty snappy actually. And I jump over here to activities again. I can roll my mouse wheel and move to the next desktop like that. And I think I could even drag this over like this. And now it's in our other desktop. And so now I'm in my second desktop. And so if I was gonna do like uh, 
see if I can remember the keystroke, it's been a while. So if I do super alt um, arrow, left arrow, then you can see I just moved it over, super alt right, and I'm back in my desktop, or I'm over in my second desktop, and then super alt left, I'm back in my first desktop. So real easy to change desktops. And I also noticed that the LibreOffice calc opened up really pretty quickly. So that's snappy, I'm liking that. In fact, let me just jump in here real quick and see if HTOP happens to be installed on here. Probably not, we're talking Fedora, I don't think they're an HTOP kind of. <laughs> so anyway, I just don't assert, so I would say that the HTOP's not in there. I'm just gonna pop it in real quick. I notice the terminal is not in here by default, so I'm just gonna jump into utilities, terminal, and I'm just gonna go grab HTOP real quick, just to confirm, I'm gonna, okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna grab HTOP real quick. A little rusty, but I, I think it's DNF. DNF install, I think. Cool. Okay. And so this is just take a second. And just want to run HTOP because I'm curious to see uh, what our idling processes are and how much our resources is being used. To me, this seems a little bit snappier than previous GNOME that I've been messing with in the past. Uh, 338, I think. And this is going to take its good old time, so I'm just going to pause it real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, total download size, 154K. I think I can spare that. Okay, now that we got that installed, let's see what our resources are like. So we got 1.27 gigs here on a virtual machine. Uh, not too shabby, I would say, probably. Kind of around where I would expect it, I suppose. And I also like the rounded corners here on the windows. That looks kind of neat. And squared off at the bottom. So that's kind of a little bit of a combo. <laughs> nice. All right. So that's all good with HTOP. Gonna go ahead and close that back to our activities. So what else do we got here? So here's our file manager, which uh, if I remember right is files. And it's got kind of a nice sleek look here. It's rounded and kind of has your, at least in Fedora, it looks like the Edweta icons there. Oh, and uh, I think I might've forgot to mention the obvious too, which was the desktop's now scrolling a horizontal position rather than the vertical. I'm just bringing my fingers over here to see if the gestures are activated on my all-in-one because it does have a touch screen, but it's not really doing anything. So probably more intended for a tablet, yeah. So the gestures, uh, for whatever reason, aren't really enabled on my all-in-one, but it's probably because it's not detecting it as a, as a tablet or that type of device but not a big deal. Uh, I think we can do alt super up arrow to go like that, but that can be kind of handy. And again, I hit super alt and up arrow. And so if I was gonna open something else like photos, and then if I was just gonna jump back into my activities again, then you can see we have icons down here, which kind of makes it nice when you got a bunch of things open, especially if I had like five or six items open, then the windows get smaller and smaller. And so it might be kind of hard to distinguish some apps. And so these little icons are really kind of cool. I like the fact that those are there because opening a lot of things on one desktop, it can tend to get crowded after a while. And let's bring out Firefox as well. And you notice too that we can drag things right out to the desktop without actually getting on the desktop and looking at it. So I can open up a number of apps all at once 
and they all have their own icons which makes it easy to identify and then I can just simply select one of them to open up my app and kind of highlight it and bring it into focus whereas my other stuff's in the background. So I like that. That's really nice. That's another new feature in GNOME that I think is really kind of cool. And the fact that I can get to the activities window just by hitting super alt up arrow and super alt down arrow will get me back out of there. So it's just a quick keystroke to get up there. And the dash is always out of the way, just like it was before, except when it comes up now, it's on the bottom. And as far as the horizontal scrolling, for me, that's, that's just fine. That's no big deal to me because I never really used GNOME enough to uh, worry about the vertical scrolling from before. And I don't think it's really much of a stretch to go from one to the other. And as far as this being on the bottom, personally, I like that on the bottom. Uh, for some people, I guess you would have to kind of adjust because out of habit, you're going to just jump over to the side here. But I think that's something somebody could get over really easy as well because of the way this layout just kind of changes as you go into the Activities Center. So all very cool. I like it a lot. So very good first impression right off the bat. So I really like uh, the simple keystrokes with the super alt right arrow to go to the desktops, left arrow to go back. And you can also use your mouse with the super alt keys just to clarify from before super alt and then center mouse wheel, roll down and go to the next desktop, roll up to go back to the first desktop. So easy peasy, nice. So let's dig into Nautilus again a little more. So in Nautilus, uh, besides looking slightly different, <laughs> see if I could remember the new things here. Uh, one of the new things in the file manager is that your preferences are more organized. So when you go into preferences, it's a, a little easier to, to find what you're looking for to switch. So the organization is a little different. To me, it looks like it's a little better organized and easier to just find your stuff. So I kind of like sorting folders before files. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You can make it expandable, which is always kind of cool. I do that in KDE. I think I'll do that. Here's where you can set your double click to open items. And by default, it's activated. But for those of you that like a single click instead, you can change it right there. Hmm. And so, yes, show thumbnails. If you like to see thumbnails on other devices or across the network, you can go ahead and hit all files or never if you don't like thumbnails. And then your captions. So yeah, the preferences is pretty nice. Also, in the older version of GNOME, what would happen sometimes if you were copying a file to another location and then you already have an existing file there, an older version, and now it'll, you know, instead of just saying, do you want to overwrite it? Now it'll simply ask you if you want to rename the file. And if you go up here, you can also, let's see, actually here. <laughs> you can also sort by last modified and first modified. Always cool. Yeah, so that's kind of the scoop with files, at least as far as I know. Let's look at some of the apps. So I'm going to jump back in here and go into my show applications and see what we got here. We got boxes, of course, which is, I believe that's the front end to like KBM, QEMU. They're a version of Vert Manager. And boxes is a pretty nice app. I don't think it's quite as feature rich as Vert Manager or Cockpit, but it's not bad. And then, of course, we got our usual stuff here, cheese and clocks and contacts. And we have LibreOffice, maps. Let's take a look at maps. And so, yes, we can zoom on stuff. And I believe they've got an improvement in here in maps as well. So if I was just going to look at some place like... Uh, mm, let's just jump down here. 
I'm going to be making a trip down here in about a week or so, or less. So let's just jump down and take a look, zoom in a little. And Maps is really cool. This is one of the apps I really kind of like in here because it is kind of cool. And so then we got something. So if you're looking for a place like, oh, uh, hmm. Well, here, let's just say uh, Bush Gardens in Tampa. And so we go up here and our little place bubble here is kind of looking different and it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of got a nice look here and it's grabbing information from here is getting it from Wikipedia. There's a few different sources that it can pick up information from. So that's really kind of cool. I like the looks and the maps is really neat. So you really can put anything in the world on here and you're going to see stuff. <laughs> so yeah, maps. Liking it. It's a very handy app. And so if we jump back in here uh, let's take a look at weather. See how weather is. I've always liked weather in Gnome. That's, that's another thing I always thought that, that was nice was their weather app. So I'm just going to throw in like a random city. Uh, we were in Tampa just now on maps, so I'm going to do that again. And all you have to do is just Type the city in there and bam, there you go. Whoa, 88? Wow. <laughs> it's pretty warm today down there. Huh. Okay. So, wow, this has got a nice new look to it too. That's quite nice, actually. And so we have our hourly right now. And it looks like at the moment they are getting some rain, probably a thunderstorm. And then daily, here's our daily forecast for the next few days. Wow, 92, 86, 84, 87. Man, it's warming right up out there. <laughs> kind of on a hot streak. That's, yeah, 92 is kind of high for this early in the year. So I'm kind of surprised to see that. But anyways, so our weather app really does have a nice look here. I think that's quite cool. So that's another improvement I think is pretty nice. And then our utilities. Of course, this isn't really overloaded with a bunch of stuff here. And I think the touch screen should work too. Um, I'm just swiping with my finger here and it works just fine. So that's good to know. And you can also do that with your mouse if you want to kind of do the dragging effect or just hit the little dot down below so very good all right yes and even your little font selector and characters that's kind of cool too if you need quick access to some emojis that's quite handy so got all kinds of stuff there to choose from just hit copy and then paste it into wherever you want to paste it nice yes I like it. All right. And so down in our dealie here, uh, I think another thing that's a little bit different, if I go in here and I open up, let's say the weather app. Because, you know, that's a nice app I would probably use a lot. So if I jump in my activity center and I right click here and select add to favorites, then that will become a favorite and it'll just kind of stay there. So now if I close it, close out of it, and actually I could have done that inside the activity center, didn't have to leave, but now you can see that it stayed down there and it's now one of my favorites. So that's nice, easy access to the weather app. <laughs> cool. And then we have our software center. Let's take a look at that if there's anything new here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit browse software. And yeah, this is looking different and it's showing our updates here. 
uh, enable third-party software repositories? Heck yeah, why not? Can never have too much to choose from, right? And then we have our updates over here, so I'm just going to hit that real quick. And while that's percolating, I'm going to go see and explore again. So it looks like we got like editor's picks, recommended, recommended games, and then we got them all categorized. That's pretty nice. I always like the categorization and recommended apps for productivity. So like if we go into editor's picks, cool. We got a lot of stuff here and really nice looking layout. I really like the layout, the grid style with the icons and the description underneath, including ratings. So that's really nice. That's a nice way to kind of look over things really fast. Sorted by ratings, which personally that's kind of what I like. I like having ratings sorted, uh, especially if I'm in a category. So if I needed something related to productivity or games or whatever, it's kind of nice to see what's hot right off the bat and here we have our graphics so my favorites are right up near the top blender and inkscape uh, open scad i've never actually used that that looks kind of interesting i always like messing with 3d stuff <laughs> uh, tile krita and gimp of course so yes tons of stuff to choose from and great apps dark table wow nice so this is looking really good i like the new look and under updates it's showing our updates now and i think i'm just going to run those updates in the background since they're available and as you can see they're all tailored to the beta for all that we're running here and so i'm going to go ahead and download it and if i remember right i mean if i got my info right uh, GNOME 40 is actually officially released as of the time of this video. However, uh, these spins like Fedora and so forth, Fedora, OpenSUSE, and uh, yeah, the GNOME Nightly, uh, those are all still in the beta. So they really haven't kind of moved up to the official. It's how I understand it. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, well, feel free to flame me in the comments below. All right, hmm, restarted update. Uh, you know what, I think I'll pass on that right now. <laughs> Probably not a good time for a restart. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this software center looks pretty decent here. I can't remember too much about the, the previous version. I don't ever remember being blown away by it, but it looks pretty nice right here and pretty well organized. So now let's go look at some settings. So I'm just gonna jump up in here and hit the old settings thingy. So up here in settings, all right. So here we left off at display. So let me just jump up to network. And here we have our wired network, which of course I'm in a virtual machine, so uh, it's not really gonna see anything else. And of course, uh, if I was on a live machine with, I would have wireless on here as well, you know, if I had Wi-Fi. From what I understand, the Wi-Fi settings are, they're a little better organized. So I guess that's one of the features with Wi-Fi that's a little bit nicer, I guess, when you, if you need to set it up manually. And no Bluetooth, of course. Here we have our background features. And right off the bat, I really did like the, this background. It's a nice choice, I think, the fedora background. But you got a lot of others you can choose from, of course, if you want a different look. Uh, maybe you're not tired of the winter yet, so you want to click on that and make it look frosty and cold. <laughs> I think I'll go back to this. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Oh, that's kind of a nice one, too. Hmm. Gonna jump out of this guy. So, yeah, nice looking background. Sweet. And, yeah, it always kind of bugs me that you can't just minimize a window like this uh, without right-clicking. Um, 
I guess it's not a big deal, but I always like kind of having the buttons up there. Probably change that through a theme, probably. So, yeah, very nice backgrounds. Not bad. Then we have our notifications, uh, which we can toggle on and off here. So, if or do not disturb if you just don't want any notifications. So, if any of these are really kind of frying your butt because you don't like seeing it, here's where you turn it off. <laughs> and then under search, all right, we got our Firefox photos, contacts. So, yeah, controls which search results are in the activities overview. Nice. And the order of search results can simply be changed by uh, moving the rows in the list all like that. So, yeah, easy peasy. And here we have our default applications and whether to integrate them into search or not. Always a plus. And then our privacy settings for our camera and microphone and all that. Again, always a good thing. Then we have our online account. So if you want to connect your data in the cloud and all that, uh, for example, you're using Google Storage, NextCloud, or Facebook, Microsoft, all this stuff. Flickr, Foursquare, and uh, Fedora. Hmm. Yeah, wow, that's interesting. Didn't know about that. It's been a while since I've been on Fedora. Quite a while. <laughs> and sharing settings here. So if you want to share on a network and so forth, uh, here you go. And remotely for remote login. Nice. And then our sound settings, which are pretty nice. And if I remember right, GNOME uses Pipewire. And Pipewire is really nice. Some may argue that it's better than the Pulse, but a very nice, I have a pair of Bluetooth headphones that are really kind of, yeah, they're kind of an older pair, but they're really stubborn. They never work great with any of my computers, but they always work the best, it seems like in GNOME, GNOME and KDE. Uh, but the Pipewire seems to suit them really well. So it seems to be a really nice setup. And we have our power settings to blank the screen after five minutes. I would probably change that to personally, you know, like half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe never. <laughs> uh, but I'm not in a situation where I have to worry about other people looking at the screen. Then we have our display here. And I already set my resolution to 1920 by 1080. Refresh rates at 50 hertz. That's kind of different. Um, I think. 60 would be more typical for where I'm at. So I'm just going to change that. And then we have our mouse and touchpad settings, our mouse speed and left, right button, uh, keyboard. So here we have our English and import source switching, special characters, compose key. Ah, I think that's different. Disabled by default. Yeah, that's neat. I haven't seen that. Maybe I just never noticed it, but that's kind of nice. So this will allow you to put uh, special characters in there if you create a, a combo. So for example, if I turn this on and did a left alt and held the left alt key down where I press the sequence, like for the example here is press your left alt followed by C and O and it will create a copyright symbol. A followed by a single quote will enter this guy. So if you want a special character, I guess you would just press your, in this example, press your left alt key and then the characters that you kind of see in the special characters separately and it'll kind of put it together and figure it out for you. That's kind of neat. <laughs> I like that. I remember back in the Windows days, uh, you could do something similar. I forgot how it worked, but you had to do like, I don't even remember now, but it was something like hold the control key down and then hit a key combination of numbers and it would like create a character, but you had to know the ASCII designation of it and all that. So it wasn't really overly common knowledge. <laughs> 
However, uh, this makes it a lot simpler. That's a really neat feature. I like that. Huh. And then you got your shortcut keys if you want to customize your different shortcuts. So that's pretty cool. And it's got some presets in here already and then you can make your custom. So nice. Makes it very simple. And I like the way they got it organized now. I don't think this was here before where they had the categories in here like your accessibility and your launchers and then it's got it broken down here for your home folder and search and settings. Yeah, that's very cool. I think that might be a new feature. So I like it. Then of course we got our printer settings, which I don't have one hooked up at the moment. Removable media, and you can even have it never prompt you. So yeah, by default it's always set to ask when you insert something like a CD or whatever. Very cool. And software, run software. Uh, that's a good default. And you can even go with other media. If you want something other than what's already there, you got a lot of choices. Then we have our color, which has nothing to do with me because I'm on a virtual machine. <laughs> but if you needed uh, some to change your color profile for some reason, that's the place to do it. And then we got our language settings. And for me, it would be English, of course. And your accessibility stuff, uh, which is all pretty typical, I think. And then here's your user settings. So if I wanted to change my icon, I could do that here and give it something cool. Maybe that putty tat or the latte there or something. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And then we got our default applications for our browsers. Right now we got Firefox of course, which is the only browser, browser that's installed here. And so that's pretty nice. I think GNOME also has their own web browser called Web, which is kind of interesting. That seems to get better over time. I almost expected that to be on here, but being that we're in Fedora, that's probably just not something they felt was needed. But uh, yeah, just thought I'd throw that in there. And then our date and time can be edited here. We're in 24 hour format right now, which I like. Uh, that works for me. And then our about, and wow, we actually have more information here. Uh, showing our GNOME version of 40, beta zero, uh, 64 bit OS, running Wayland, nice. And it's showing our virtualization. I think probably if I was on a hardware machine, it would probably show the hardware here and show what I was running. Uh, even has a graphics processor, nice. So yeah, I don't remember all this information being here before, so that's cool. And easy access to the software updates, nice. That's a big plus too. So I think I covered it all. Well, I don't know if I covered it at all because GNOME is 40 is so new that I probably missed a bunch of things. But this is the stuff that I got off, off the bat that I know about. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I think the new GNOME 40 has a lot of promise. You know, this is something, even though I'm not a GNOME kind of guy, this is something I could be comfortable in too, I think. Especially because I can just hit my super alt key, super alt up and just be right here and I got my dash here at the bottom. So that kind of even eliminates the, the desire, I guess, to have a bottom panel, which is what I like. I kind of like the traditional bottom panel, but with this dash on here, it kind of makes it okay. And the way the layout is as well, I almost feel like that I don't care that much that there's no icons on the desktop. I don't like the fact that I don't have a choice for that. I know there's extensions that you can install, but I'm almost positive they're broken in 40 because GNOME by design is going to break your extensions when they update. They don't like you using extensions, <laughs> even though they're out there. However, I'm sure the extension developers will be on this. They're already on it, I'm sure. Personally, I probably wouldn't mess with the extensions. 
But overall, I think this is a great feel. I like the horizontal swiping. Uh, that is really nice. And with my mouse, it's just simple with the super alt middle key. And uh, I was just doing it right now. It was switching between desktops, but you couldn't see it because I don't have anything open. So, <laughs> but I really like it. I like the idea that, that you got this vertical here and the keyboard shortcuts with the, the, I mean the horizontal. And so this horizontal swiping is really nice. And for me, that's very intuitive. And so if I had like a little tablet or a small laptop with touchscreen, uh, that would that would feel pretty right at home because that's really what I would do. I would just use that uh, the way it is. And now I'm using my mouse, middle mouse. And to me, that's very convenient too. I just like kind of doing that virtual swipe there, I suppose. Yeah, a really great experience overall. So I got to say GNOME 40 is really off to a great start. I think they are going in a pretty positive direction. And at the same time, if I was a regular user of GNOME 338 coming over to 40 here, it really wouldn't be much of a an adjustment for me. And I like the fact that, that I got the bar on the bottom. You know, some people might not like that. It's not for everybody, but I prefer it there. And I think users coming over from other OSs like, like Mac would relate to it a lot better on the bottom than they would off to the side there. I was never one to, to like it on the side. I was okay with it, but I was never crazy about it. So now that the workspaces are swiping horizontally rather than vertically, it makes more sense that this would be on the bottom anyway, where as before it kind of made more sense when you were in a vertical thing, I suppose. <laughs> and the show applications, very nice. Uh, I like the new look here with the shrunken windows uh, because I don't remember that in the previous version. And maybe it was there and I'm just oblivious, but to me that looks new as well. And the drag and drop, I really like that too, where you can drag stuff right out and have it on your desktop and still be in your environment here and drag something else out, you know. So that's all cool. I, I think that's neat. And then if I wanted to, I could drag this right over to the other desktop and have that open there. Makes it very simple, a really nice, a nice touch. So yes, I gotta say, this is a winner for me. I think GNOME is going in a good direction and I gotta give it my JK thumbs up and another one just to make it a double yes <laughs> so no yeah it's good I think I think uh, any praise that they're getting right now from the community is well deserved when the final gnome 40 is pretty much mainstreamed out there I think it's gonna be a real hit that's my opinion anyway gnome 40 is totally out of beta with all these other desktop releases like Fedora and OpenSUSE and you know what have you Ubuntu eventually someday I think the overall reception is going to be really positive I could be wrong about it because again I'm speaking more of a KDE user than a GNOME user but from my point of view I think it's going to be great so there you go my two cents and to me somehow it feels snappier too and so the new GTK4 and GNOME 40, I think, is really a huge step. So I really like this, and I hope this review was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, and hit the subscribe. Thanks again for watching.